Hi, everybody. Uh, my name's Sam Barnett. I'm the talent producer at Film Hub North. You're about to watch a recording of the BFI Film Academy Lab session on producing short films with Holly Bryan. The BFI Film Academy Labs are all about helping 16 to 25 year olds break into the screen industries. These monthly practical sessions are led by industry professionals with a focus on explaining the specifics of working in film and television and developing your skills to become the best screen creative you can be. The labs are programmed across three strands, storytelling, business of film and career ladder. We hope you enjoyed today's session. Thanks for joining us today. Um, so I just wanted to jump straight into it. Um, we're quite limited for time today. So we're going to have a little, over the course of this discussion, we're going to have a little look at your career and the different entry routes into the industry um, and to give advice to young people that are thinking about maybe pursuing the role of the producer um, and what that might include. So just to start off today, um, can you tell us a little bit about how you started in terms of your training and gaining experience? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think, I mean, I've had a few different sort of moments of, uh, I guess, trying to get into the industry and like, depending on, you know, kind of where I was at in my, my life and stuff. And so when I was like in my early 20s, I kind of uh, just decided on a bit of a whim to go to the Northern Film School because I was doing like a hobby thing, like a course in Grimsby that about like making films, which wasn't really making films um and um at the time like that course was like really really good so it was like a foundation degree and uh that was what appealed to me really I didn't want to go and do like a an actual degree I wanted to go and just do stuff make stuff um and I kind of like I'd like the idea of like doing that and and there was something about like the production side of things that I really liked and what was great about that course was that they kind of gave you I think it might have even been no, it can't have been three months, but it feels like it was three months of like time to just go and like work and like do work experience or like, you know, just kind of do whatever worked. And then you had to do a module about what that experience was and what you got from it and all that sort of thing. And actually, while I was doing that, uh, I met some of the people who were making like music videos and um like some like kind of corporate or commercial stuff and they're like people that I still work with now you know I just wanted to sort of get out and meet people and 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 see what it was like actually working on set and and you know they were quite small productions but I got a lot from that and very quickly then just started working with them like so started doing like actual professional work during the time that I was studying and then uh in my last year or second year they um, had someone come in and talk to us and they were looking for sort of like people to come and work on this feature film. So I went and worked on this feature film for a couple of months as a production secretary and sort of just fell into the production side of things. But then, yeah, went and worked on a TV series and really didn't like it, you know, in the actual production office. Um, so, so kind of thought, oh, you know, that's the way you get into film production. That's how you become a producer didn't really fully you know understand like how to do things a bit differently had made like a couple of short films and kind of like yeah was just in the experimental phase of like figuring out kind of like what I like to do and I really like doing the music videos and then I you know kind of got work as a production manager on on those which was all the sort of really logistical like practical sides of um production rather than you know maybe more of the creative side but I met so many great people and actually the, the longest kind of friendships or relationships I have like in the industry are from that time of like just sort of getting to know what I thought worked well and what didn't um but then when I sort of like yeah sort of played around with doing the tv side sort of figured out that wasn't for me and then kind of took some time to go and um yeah do other things so like working in theater working on festivals uh yeah just all those things that had those skills that I really enjoyed about the things I had been doing and that I'd kind of played around with when I was at on the, doing the university course um but yeah just a kind of varied background really and dipping into different things yeah so you, you kind of took that time to explore all the different areas like festivals exhibition television and you kind of got a sense that you wanted to move 
in a very specific direction within the film industry. So I suppose what, so after you kind of experimented with all those areas and you, you decided to make a direction really, what did you, what was your journey into the film industry from there? And I suppose quite critically at that point, like what did it look like to support you, uh, support yourself financially in that space? Because I think that's a lot of question, like a question a lot of people that are wanting to move into film, specifically kind of producing question and wonder yeah, I mean, there's there's a couple of quite big things to unpack there, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of talk about sort of how I came back into the industry a bit first. I think, you know, I, I had, I feel like at one point I was like, oh, I'm not too sure if, if you know, producing is for me because I was going at it from that very, like, production office, like, on-set sort of thing, and I didn't, it, it's worth saying this was, like, quite a while ago, and, you know, I'm talking in, tw like, 2010, um, and there wasn't the great things that we have now, like Film Hub North, for example, and like just a lot more like sort of industry focused festivals in the north where you can kind of go and like figure out what all these things are. Like, I, I feel like that wasn't really there or I didn't know about it if it was there. Um, so I, I just didn't have the opportunity to really understand what what making short why make shorts what, what to do with them like you know understanding like how you get them into festivals and then go to festivals and meet all these people so I'd kind of um been discouraged I would say mm -hmm. but then over the time where I wasn't focused on producing I was doing other things I still kept doing odd things that I enjoyed so like working on like music videos I would do every now and again and then I'd moved to Japan for a while and um like work, uh, like made a short film with like a writer director while I was there and did a few other sort of projects with like Japanese artists and sort of knew that I still really enjoyed this and you know then I kind of turned 30 and thought oh you know I need to think about what I actually want to do for my career and so like kind of came back to the UK and it just sort of coincided with the the time where they were thinking about setting up the producer lab so the Film Hub North like produce a lab for emerging producers and so went to do that and then suddenly was like all oh, right yeah this is encapsulating all those things that I enjoy and actually giving me a bit of a direction that isn't just like go and get a job on some film or tv series you know it was approaching it a very different way um and so then yeah really really wanted to try and find like artists well writers and directors that I kind of I really like their ideas or their you know their kind of vibe I guess and and start making stuff again. I think like the financial thing is a bit tough because uh, when I kind of was making the first shot film after returning, it was during COVID and mm -hmm. it, you know life is was very different then and and actually for me I think that space where everything just sort of slowed down well stopped massively it was like you can play like some catch up and no one was really going anywhere or doing anything you weren't really spending any money so it was kind of easy to li live relatively cheaply while still sort of feeling like you were moving forward in you know online um so I made like a few films then but then very quickly sort of um got to the point where things were opening back up and then things become regular and you like, oh, you know, I've been really enjoying this, like, space to explore and, like, do what I enjoy. And so, yeah, I would say that's kind of become more of an issue in the last couple of years. I mean, I was very, very fortunate that I did the associate producer program and uh, that that was great. But, you know, I've done anything from working in a bar to, like, online transcription. Like, it's just, I mean, I think it's just tough. You know, you just find mm. things that help you have the headspace and the time to do the projects you want to do. If that makes sense. Like, I don't think, yeah, it doesn't matter what that is. It's like, does it work for what you want to do? And not everybody has that luxury. I suppose I feel quite lucky that I've managed to find those bits of work that kind of fit around stuff and then do things that are relative to what I want to do as a job, which is produce. So, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I, th I think you, you're also right. There's so many more opportunities available for people that are wanting to get into the film industry. And I think, you know, the BFI Film Academy programs as well are a really good opportunity for people that are kind of starting off within the industry. Um, the short courses and the residential programs um, are worth looking at. And yeah, like you said, the opportunities through Film Hub North and the other film hubs across the regions are really brilliant, you know, to give people a bit of insight and uh, experience into moving into those different roles. 
Um, I suppose um, just for a bit of context, it might be quite nice if you um, talk about some of the projects that you're working on now um, or have worked on in the last six months in terms of features and shorts and documentaries, just so we've got a bit of context today. Um, yeah, I mean, to be honest, for the last, um, for the majority of the last year, I've been kind of focused around the feature that um, I've produced um, with Lucy Mir, uh, who, um, so that's premiere in Edinburgh in August. And so a lot of my headspace has been sort of taken up by that. And then alongside that, like developing projects with like Alfie Barker, who did the the last one of these, I think. And so we've got um, a short uh, hybrid doc that we're developing together and then we're developing a feature together. Um, the last couple of shots that I kind of made that are on, well, finished up now on the festival circuit, it's the Dogs with Beth Rowland, so she's from Manchester, and then Predators with Jack King, who also did the feature that I've done. And um, so they're kind of like finishing their festival circuits now. But yeah, mostly just sort of building this kind of development slate and alongside a few shots. And I'm doing a thing with Bradford 2025 as well, um, which is like three shots with um, Bradford filmmakers. So it's kind of a bit of a bit of a mix. Sounds good. Um, are you able to tell us a little bit about the feature that you're working that is just that is releasing this year? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's uh, an art house drama that we made in the Yorkshire Dales in January um, on a pretty low budget. And so with a guy called Jack King, who's uh, based in Bradford. And yeah, it's just about two um, migrant workers in a car wash in Bradford that kind of you know they they both on they both kind of like very different guys one's kurdish and older one is romanian and much younger and they discover the body of a colleague on the car wash lot um that's taken his own life and they kind of don't know what to do about this you know he's not really got they don't want to kind of uh affect the business of the car wash so they decide to take him out to the arch hills and give him a burial um but you know things don't go to plan they kind of disagree over the best way to to, to dispose of the body essentially and it's it's more of a sort of um battle between those two of finding a common ground and yeah it's yeah go see it it's in edinburgh in august if you can go to the film festival that is it sounds brilliant um there's some people in the chat saying that they've seen predators at festivals as well so that's great um cool okay so we're going to move on to the next bit so we're going to have a little look at some of the some clips and trailers from the projects that we've talked about so we're going to watch a trailer for hanging on for those of you that joined at the last lab um you'll remember alfie barker um was here so alfie barker is the director of that um we're going to watch a trailer for bury the dogs and a clip from predators your life's on hold I've lived on this estate since 1970. We thought they were going to knock our houses down, build us new ones to live in. We didn't realise at the time that it was going to be we move out and stay out. Yo, why is he coming all the day here if he lives in London now? I know it. He is from London, but he moved here when he got married, and now he's thinking about moving back. What's this? You know, Mrs. No. No, 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 no. Fucking no, she's miserable. Oh, it's twice. I reckon I'll be proper in with them if it goes well today, you know. Yeah, please don't move! Wait. <laughs> what are you singing on the swing? Oscar? Right, you can hold Oscar. Just you, okay? And if he doesn't try to run off, you can give him one of these treats as a reward. <gasps> Stop, good, good man. And then you. You almost got the cheese touch. The what? The cheese touch. No one knew when or how, but one day that cheese appeared on the black dot. Yeah, I didn't touch the cheese. No, I didn't. <gasps> I just looked at it. <laughs> Everyone, run! <laughs> yeah, the cheese. <laughs> Chicken, you squeeze him too tight. Chicken, you're gonna hurt him. No. Freya. 
Do you know what? If we like ever fell out, I like definitely steal Oscar. I've planned it out in my head and everything. I'd show up to yours at like three o'clock in the morning, all in black, and nobody'd see me because I'd be hiding my identity and I'd just take him and then run away. That's not funny, Tegan. It is. <laughs> Tegan, can you look at me, please? Tegan. Tegan, can you look at me, please? Thank you. Now, without getting angry or raising your voice, just explain to me exactly what happened before you got here, because I'm just not following. I told you, you ran away. OK, well, that's not what Freya says. So I suppose we've kind of touched on it a little bit, um before but I think there's, there's going to be quite a few people watching this uh watching the session today who are kind of considering that role of the producer and how they actually get started within it um I think it's kind of acknowledged that there's a real lack of producers across the regions and across the UK um so I, I suppose it's it's really um you know what are the different entry routes there um for emerging producers um and at what point in your career did you learn about the role of the film producer really where were you um, I think it's a really tough thing to pinpoint, really. I think, you know, every producer is different. Everybody has different styles and different things they want to do. And and not to mention, you know, like, I mean, obviously, we're specifically talking about film here. But, you know, some it, it depends, like, whether you want to go into film or TV or, or everything. I think they all sort of look slightly different. But generally, I think it's like, yeah, understanding, like, the, the difference between the logistical sort of, like, business head and then like the creative side, I think that that was what the difficulty was for me, which is kind of what I was saying was I was very like I was taught all this sort of like logistical side of being a producer, but without really understanding how to develop my own taste. So actually being able to explain like what you like, what you don't like and and yeah, articulate that to people and and kind of be a bit discerning when you're reading scripts and like why you want to take on a project versus why you don't. I think that was the thing that I had to really learn and which was what sort of came from doing the producer lab for Film Hub North was like, yeah, you know, you get, you get sort of like the chance to read scripts and meet different people. And and we were very much pushed to inter interrogate, I guess, like what we liked about things, and what we didn't. And everybody's going to be different about that. You know, that is just the arts in general. It, it's very subjective so um yeah it's kind of yeah that, that's that's I think that can be a difficult thing to understand especially if you if no one's kind of explained to you what the intricacies of being a producer is because there is you have to be good at like the financial side really you have to be good at the logistical side I think it's really important to understand all like the elements of how everything works and especially when you're doing a short you're kind of forced into that because you have to sort of be across everything. So it's just sort of, um, yeah, what, um, you know, it's all continual learning and just sort of continually trying to improve, like whatever you sort of feel are the flaws, I guess, in yourself. I feel like I might have gone off on a tangent on a slightly different... No, 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 no. We're, we're, definitely, yeah. still, we're definitely still on track there. Okay. Um, yeah. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's all about identifying that kind of journey and that way into the industry and like yeah understanding the skill set but we'll get we'll get to that a little bit next as well yeah um, I just yeah I just think it just it just changes I think you know when I was doing the producers lab and we had people come and talk to us about feature film and and I'm just in my head and they're talking about all these different you know like starting to talk about sales and and my head was just blown I'm like oh god I can't imagine ever being in that place and doing that and then you sort of go along the journey and you just see what mm -hmm. happens and you learn more and more as you go. And I think it's that thing of actually the most important thing is to sort of learn that you're always going to be learning. You're never going to know everything. Everything's going to be a surprise. Every project is going to be different. So, yeah. Yeah, you kind, of, you kind of touched on it a little bit before. So you're talking about the kind of the battle between kind of the creative and the business side of things. So I think a lot of people, when they think about the role of producer, really think of it as kind of 
the business. So being responsible for bank accounts, schedules, budgets, all the legal stuff, um, all of the, the stuff that feels scary. But actually, would you? there's a lot more kind of creative to the role. Could you talk to us a little bit about that and how you what that kind of looks like in your day to day role? Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's changed, obviously. I think when I first started making shots and I was I was learning and then I was working with filmmakers that are also learning and you try and sort of learn this thing together and, you know, nothing's ever going to be sort of perfect. But I think it's all it is a collaborative industry. You have to work with people and it's not just the producer and the right and, and director. It's like everybody on that set, especially as the producer, like you want to understand what they do, what is difficult for them, like what makes things easy and and actually when you sort of um are in a position where you're making a film and there's never sort of enough money to do exactly what you want there's so there's the, the two, two sides of creative there's like working with filmmakers on, and writers on scripts and and sort of having ideas and working together to be like oh you know do you think this might work better I think I mean all producers are different but I very much like enjoy that element of sort of working alongside on the script and and kind of unpicking things there but then there's also like the problem solving aspect which is also really really creative and like and is this one of the sides that I really love doing is like that you know there's a problem you've got to solve it somehow but you can't solve it in a way that compromises the film you've got to make the film better or you know at least achieve what the intention is there in the mm. scene or whatever it is that you're doing in that moment um whether it's something in prep or or even in post so yeah it's like there are very creative aspects and I think they they have to work alongside you can't really have like one or the other um you kind of need to find ways to make both of them work I think and and figure out which are the bits that you enjoy as well I think mm -hmm. it's yeah the key yeah that makes that's that makes absolute sense so I suppose for those people that are kind of wanting to move forward, you know, start researching into the role of the film producer, look at skills and training. I suppose to start off with, what kind of skills and experience do you need at that starting point? Um, I think asking for help is really important. I, you kind of, yeah, like I say, every day is a school day. You're always going to not know something. I, it, there's, there's like with the, there's a lot to be said for like finding your peers like with the lab you know it started with that and you know we still have a whatsapp group we also kind of know each other and you kind of always have someone to go to um but even if you're just starting out it's like who you know who do you maybe have you seen a film that you really liked and like maybe you could reach out to somebody and be like oh I really like this film and like want to kind of unpick how that worked or or, or that you're making something and there's something you don't quite understand I think you know, you're never gonna necessarily get better unless you can ask people for help. And and I think that is one of the key things. And to kind of link to that, I think is being aware of what you're maybe not so good at, because you can't, as a producer, like you just can't be good at everything. It's so tough, like there's so many different elements. So there's also a lot to be said for finding people to work with who kind of complement like where your sort of um, st strengths and weaknesses are, I suppose. Mm -hmm getting to know getting to know yourself a little bit better and how you kind of work practically and creatively on a on a on a script or a set or whatever set you know state stage you're at yeah and then yeah kind of really also learning your own tastes and I know these all sound kind of like not practical they're not really practical advices but I think if you're working on a project that you really really like and you can articulate why it's amazing you'll probably do all right. You know, even if you have to make the first one off your own back or something, you know, you'll get, because I mean, don't judge, you know, how I pitched that film earlier, but um, <laughs> so being able to talk about the projects that you really care about is also really important. So yeah, it's like getting people to care about what you care about is also key. And I think I was terrible at that. And, you know, I'm still learning how to get better at that. It's like, you kind of have to just get better at, yeah, explaining things to different people in different ways and yeah out and learning how to say no is like a key like not just being like you don't want to be a naysayer but like you want to be someone who's being realistic while also trying to achieve something in quite difficult circumstances so you know kind of know when to not take on too much not do things that aren't achievable like have a bit of um yeah consideration for that I think 
um and just like learning how to work with others like you'll only really get in into doing different stuff and having a good time with it and like you know I mean there's a different level of fun to producing I think it's like pipe too fun if anyone knows what that is but yeah if you work well with others and you develop good working relationships you will just sort of like go on this journey which I think is I would say been my biggest asset is like finding good people to work with that are like nice people that care as much as you care and don't ever make it like a horrible place to be mm. um but yeah like just identifying what you like and identifying talent you want to work with like if you're starting out find someone else who's starting out that's written something it might not be perfect because you're all still learning but there'll be something there that you think you know I kind of like this and once you identify that I think you just don't, you'll just get yourself on the right track I don't think there's really like a hard and fast rule I think you just find like what you enjoy about it and even when things are really bad and tough and you're like oh that was that didn't go great it's like well why didn't it you know like can you learn something from that and then just do it right the next time be quite curious and yeah like um yeah I don't know just get to know yourself a bit better as well yeah yeah that that sounds absolutely brilliant yeah so that kind of guidance around meeting people um that you can gel with and work with like constructively moving forward is really brilliant so for somebody that's kind of starting out you know they're thinking about pulling some people together you know getting in touch with like local filmmaking community and creatives to collaborate with have you got any advice into moving into those spaces to meet kind of writers directors you know and people that are making film yeah I mean the first step is I suppose going to I mean I'm sure there are there aren't that many but I'm sure there are networking events like go to things like that and I know like there'll be so many people listening to this going I hate networking I'm not very good at it I don't like it makes me anxious like I'm the most an- socially anxious person it's you kind of find tactics to do it it does get easier um but to go into festivals is the easiest thing. Go to smaller festivals where you know filmmakers are going, and especially if you're making shorts, go to a festival where there's lots of shorts filmmakers. Uh, the Beth Rowland, who did Bury the Dogs, who uh, that might have been the one that didn't work earlier. Um, I met Beth at Aesthetica in 2019, and she was just walking down the sh- street, and I think she was in a queue, and you all have these lanyards, and you just sort of get chatting to people, and then we went to the pub, and we're like, oh, actually, we've got, you know, there's something that works here you know in a kind of creative taste sort of way and she's telling me about this film she wanted to make which was actually bury the dogs and then years later we made it um so it is it's just one of those things you just go and meet go to places where you're going to meet like-minded people and that's pro- the best place for that is probably festivals and there are like really good northern festivals now so it doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg to like go and and attend them like Sometimes, you know, it doesn't necessarily cost anything. You can go for the day just to kind of figure out like what the best, yeah, the best kind of days are, you know, you, and then you can ask people who've been before, you know, what, what was the best day that you went? What were the events you went to where you met people? And it just comes back to that sort of mm-hmm. asking for help. And, and yeah, there are lots of people that run really warm, inviting environment, in, you know, those kind of events rather than like the cold ones where you just walk in and you don't know anyone and, you know but find some friends to go with but don't just stand and talk to your friends obviously but find like a if you get into a panic mode you've got someone safe who can then introduce you to someone they've chatted to or yeah I think that's probably the best best way to start anyway and then just yeah start reading scripts and talking to people even if nothing comes of it you know you start on that journey. Brilliant thank you um so yeah just to offer some other alternatives and opportunities as well if you're 16 to 19 um, and you're thinking about the role of the producer um, I'd recommend having a look at the BFI Film Academy short courses which are now open for recruitment all across the UK Um, so have a look on the BFI Film Academy website to find your closest um, school uh, and training centre so there's that Um, taking part in BFI Film Academy things such as this uh, and also the BFI Film Academy Plus programmes um, at Film Hub North we have just closed the Micro Short Film Fund and um, we've got the DIY Filmmaking Challenges coming up and we also run networking events across the North as well. Um, have a look at the regional film hubs and uh, their networking events that are happening all across the UK 
um, to meet with filmmakers across the region. Uh, and again, finally, yeah, have a look at the local film festivals, um, go down and meet loads of young people. Um, yeah, and find filmmakers, writers, people that are making stuff across the region. Um, was there anything else on that one, Holly? What, on, meet, on meeting people? Yeah. I don't know. I think it, it depends what level you're at. I think if, if you kind of, yeah, if you're starting out or you're making shorts, it's definitely the best way. And and if you've made something and you get it into a festival, just go to the festival. I, I think that's probably how I've met the most people. But also maybe just um, if, if you're really early career and you really want to just learn, you know, what it's like, just take some work experience on a set, go meet you know try and chat to the crew obviously when they're not working get to know whoever's producing that it could be that you just go on a short film set or something bigger it you, that that also is really great just take sort of the the learning opportunities where they come and like make your own opportunities if they're not there it, it I think yeah you could go and do some work experience on a set like get to know somebody who becomes like a long-term collaborator you know even if it's like the production designer that's great we all need production designers Mm -hmm. so yeah Brilliant. thank you um and so just to round this bit up how do you identify talent so we've kind of touched on it a little bit in terms of your taste and the creative element as a producer and building a slate but for you how, how are you identifying talent when you're going into those rooms and you're meeting writers directors and potential collaborators oh yeah it's tough i think it's really really nuanced it, it really depends i think sometimes i'll meet somebody that has uh you know sometimes someone's just like approached me in a really good way and I'm like oh, I kind of get a nice kind of vibe from them and so I'll you know read what they've written or it might be that, that someone's made something that I really like and and sometimes it just literally comes down to like meeting somebody getting on with them being interested in like what they're doing but it has to you know the project has to be good as well I have to read it and see that there's something there that I'm creatively interested in that kind of stands out for me um so you know there's lots of there's lots of different ways but it is like it's a journey that you go on when you make a film so there has to be you don't need to be the best of friends but you need to have this complementary personality that sort of works as you're going to go through this journey which is going to be like a long time and probably be stressful at points and all those sort of things so um I think that's really important but then you also have to have the is the project right do I like the project is there something different about this have I seen it before or is it coming at it with a new angle is it written well you know when you're making shots not everything is written perfectly but that's the thing is like can you then have a conversation about what you thought about it and that is constructive rather than closing it down so if it becomes yeah. constructive then you can collaborate then I feel like that relationship often can continue. So, no, that's that's brilliant. Um, so, finally, I suppose what so we we've kind of talked about those things that you look for, kind of in in collaborators and the spaces that we go to. But what practical skills do you need as a producer when you're starting out? So it could be something quite simple as you know knowledge and and understanding of how to use a bit of software or you know is there anything that you can kind of guide people that are thinking about starting off from the beginning yeah i mean i think yeah i think there's there's so many different skills like you can't you can't necessarily go to everything i think passion is definitely the key one if you're like i absolutely love this project you will just find a way to make it happen um an ability to sort of like find some people to talk to about how to make it happen um and then obviously like a bit of sort of practical skills around like I mean you can the, those are the things I think are not too difficult to learn like how to schedule a film or, or like how to budget a film you can you, you can not know that and then learn that or like ask someone for help and and get to that that point I think it is just yeah keenness because it's a tough world it's it's hard to get a film made it's like you need to have the thing that motivates you to keep going almost and like still find find it enjoyable and because there is like a like I say you know it's like that that type two fun that then you know retrospectively you're like oh god you know I grew I really grew as a person or you know I met some brilliant people or you know you just that it kind of sustains you I think through your career um 
so yeah i think i would just say it's it's all about what's up here it's it's whether you kind of really care about bringing stories to screen and if you do you'll learn all the things that you need to go along with it but just have the personality type that knows that you need to learn the things that you don't know don't just bluff and then because you'll just you know you'll struggle and fail you know you have to ask people for help and i think that is the greatest skill brilliant thank you um so i think you're you're going to talk about predators as a bit of a case study in terms of producing um looking across kind of pre-production production and post-production um to give everybody an understanding of what the lifespan of a film um can be in terms of shorts yeah yeah so so predators um was uh difficult to shoot for a lot of reasons like we had kids animals all of the things that they say that you shouldn't have so it was always going to be a case of budget versus sort of schedule and like trying to make that work so just to give a bit of context you know you saw you saw the scene earlier so you kind of understand a little bit about the film um i co-produced this film um, and the writer and director was um, someone who I'd worked with for a very long time. So we kind of already had like a bit of a developed relationship around sort of the script, like how to work on the script and all of those things. And I absolutely loved it. And it, it was kind of one of those ones that you keep coming back to. Um, in terms of pre-production, I was just going to talk a bit about casting. I think there was interesting things that happened at different stages of this production um but casting for this was going to be like really really important because we had these kids that were I think in the script they were supposed to be sort of um 10 to 12 so just before you become a teenager so slightly still like kind of exploring like who you are really as a as a person and not really yeah understanding like you know making bad decisions and then kind of have to suffer the consequences um sort of thing and uh so we wanted to find like specific characters um but that weren't like ac necessarily actors we really wanted to street cast it we did find like great great actors um our three kids but we had to do like a lot of effort to find them you know we did um we had a casting director who sort of um did initial stages of workshops at like the Nottingham TV workshop I think they did one in like Manchester Liverpool and then we set one up in Bradford as well to try and like attract kids just from the communities in Bradford to just kind of workshop with them Jack who's the writer director is really really good with working with non-actors but also with kids like he's done that a lot on different projects in the past so we really wanted to put on you know, but we couldn't go everywhere, basically. We didn't have the time or the money to like go to all of these different cities. So the casting director and the casting assistant sort of did the different cities. We did Bradford. And then we watched all the tapes to try and identify like the dynamics between the kids and figure out, you know, who kind of felt like um, the Tegan character who was kind of a bit naughty and a bit, and, and he's the bully essentially, you know, in the film. Uh and then we've got Freya, who's kind of like the friend who is kind of egged on a bit and, and a bit a bit more innocent, who's got this little dog who she loves. And then the adopted brother, um, who's supposed to be a really, you know, an outsider in whatever way. So we had to, you know, find these individual characters, but then they had to work naturally with each other. So we needed these two girls to be friends, but one to sort of like lead that relationship and then um the Liam character to be this outsider who really wants to be part of the group so that was a really tough thing to do when you know you're working with 10 11 12 year olds but we did like a recall session in Bradford and um actually there was a, a girl that we already really liked for that role who then had become friends with this other actress that we liked and they naturally had just become friends and in this workshop and um we did like a test run of a scene with the um with who we watched play uh Liam and uh yeah it just sort of worked we just kind of felt like oh well, you know this this is the the dynamic we want but actually you know that actor had quite complex needs and we were unsure you know like could we on a shot make that happen and and kind of adjust to you know work with him and make sure that he kind of like wanted to be part of the film and had a good experience doing it and didn't feel like 
the elements of bullying were like real and luckily we had you know they always say when you're casting kids you're also casting the parents you need like good parents and I've worked on shoots where the parents are not great um so I knew that and you know luckily all of the parents of all the kids we had in that film were absolutely amazing they all like really wanted to do the film they really got it they were kind of you know everyone sort of became really friendly with each other um so that was like that was the real you know there was obviously like lots of elements of pre-production that I could talk about but they're not I feel like that on this shoot was the most um the most complex you know obviously the finding of the we had too many locations on that shoot and but we shot it near where I live so it was it actually wasn't too hard because you just go out for a run and like find like a woodland and yeah stuff like that um but yeah, yeah. like I, we, well, yeah so that's the other thing it was mostly outside so we had kids animals and it was mostly outside which was a nightmare um because then on day one the schedule like just meant we had to do all the difficult stuff on day one which you never want um because you're always slow on the first day so we had like the first day with the kids and um we also had like we had this giant snake um like a 20 foot python um which then the weather obviously was gale force winds when we we're doing the outside dialogue scenes which is great and then the heavens opened and we had torrential rain so you know the the animal handler with the snakes like you know you can't have the snake outside it's not because it, it was September or October I think and um yeah he's like you can't we can't let it outside and then we get to the woods and there's like a kind of stream and he's thinking oh the snake's going to go off in the stream and so that so that was tough so we had to then pop, like think this is the creative problem solving is is the kind of how we're going to manage all this and stay on schedule and so we were constantly working on the schedule so yeah, that's the other thing. Work with a good first AD who can like really like act like quickly and think of like how to solve this problem when you're going behind schedule and still get the story and all of that sort of thing. Holly, just to jump in there, can you yeah. clarify um, what the role of the first AD is, what it's what it means and what what the role is? Yeah, the... so yeah, first AD is is first assistant director. So they work alongside the director and they will schedule the film. Um, and be sort of like the lead on set so they'll be driving like they'll understand like where the camera's going what all the setups are like what the scenes are that they need to achieve that day and it is like it's part of this trio like you kind of cinematographer first ad and director um they all have to sort of work in synchronicity i think and and you know on on a shoot where you're kind of up against it there's an element of like really understanding what can be dropped like what do you absolutely need to get how do we make this scene work if things don't quite go to plan um which you know when you're working on a bigger shoot you probably don't have a, you have more prep time but when you're doing a short film you don't have as much prep time so sometimes there's a bit of like playing around but um did that answer the question absolutely i can also okay. see how that would be incredibly valuable when you've got animals and kids on your shoot it sounds like it must have been quite a quite a challenging time yeah uh, and yeah. it's, the, it's the main personality as well. So you need someone who's like really calm and like kind of creating a nice environment, but that also like knows exactly what's going on and is able to sort of like keep things moving when maybe they're not. So they're, yeah, they're kind of like the timekeeper, but I, I think they're like, um, yeah, they're just a, a, that kind of trio is like that personality link has to be good on all sides. Otherwise something just doesn't quite work. And yeah, you all sort of have to work together and, and yeah, so yeah, on this shoot, that was the schedule was the tough thing was like keeping it because we already sort of knew that, you know, if we had an extra day, we we would have had loads of time and like space, which we did need, but we just couldn't quite make that work on the budget. So we had to just be a bit more creative with like how we shot it and what the setups were and be a bit more fluid because we knew that that might happen especially when you've got kids who in some scenes might need a little bit more time and, and you've got an animal that doesn't do what you want it to do and all those sorts of things. So it's just, yeah, it's that a bit of that creative problem solving. And actually we were very like hands on, like I was trying to do that, like alongside the team of thinking. And then also things like losing a location, like the day before you're supposed to go there and then thinking, oh God, you know, like how are we going to adjust this last minute? It just... I don't know that's the fun bit to me really I, I, I kind of I kind of like that it's like 
kind of thinking like on your feet and and solving problems but uh but it was yeah it was tough and like it's just all about who you have around you and like we had a really great team on that film and everyone you know was kind of in good spirits and you just always think like if everybody's in good spirits everything's fine but if they're not it's like how are you gonna how are you gonna lift the spirits so that was kind of my most main job on on well every shoot that I've ever done really I think if you if you're having too good a time it's not great but you don't you want everyone to go away feeling like you know happy about the project that you've done so it is yeah welfare welfare is a big part of a producer's job it's probably the thing I didn't talk about is like making sure like everybody is sort of happy and if they're not like how can you improve it because you all want to work together and you all want to get something out of it um so yeah I think like probably me and the director like had a terrible shoot but I think everyone else actually I don't know <laughs> um <laughs> uh but yeah so then post-production was kind of where this film got a little bit interesting because we had this script that we'd worked on quite a bit because it gone you know through some iterations and things and and then gone through development through like BFI Network and and all that sort of thing. And I, we were all like really happy with the script. And I still think I, re I would read the script now and I would still be like, oh, yeah, it works. But like when we cut it together, it just something just wasn't quite working. Like it was a pace issue. It was, kind of felt like there was all this stuff happening in the film. And then it just really slowed down and, you know, didn't feel like too interesting or things weren't quite working. And uh yeah, I've never done this with with another film, like in this way. In post-production, you're always a little bit creative. You have to sort of step away from the script and what you've shot and figure out what works and doesn't work. You are adjusting the whole thing, like at every stage, really. Um, but yeah, with this one, it was kind of, I ended up you know, having to raise a conversation about like, actually, maybe we need to think about doing this a bit differently. So we actually readjusted the timeline. And so this film is actually... And if anyone's seen it, may, yeah, maybe, I don't know if this would be surprising or not, but it's in non, the script was in chronological order, mm. but the film is not. So that was to kind of balance out the pacing of the edit because, yeah. And that and that's what it is. It's like, you have to look at things and um, it's like the phrase, like you have to be able to kill your darlings. You have to be able to kind of remove yourself from the thing that you, I mean, this is if you're a writer director, but even if you're a director, what you've shot and what, you might love a shot that you got and but it might just not work at all so you've got to be able to sort of let things go or just kind of imagine things slightly differently and for this one you know we did and I think in the end we managed to make it work but you know there are things like costume continuity or whatever that probably in some places if you look really closely you know mm -hmm. yeah doesn't you know um because I think it was also supposed to be over more days and then the way we've re-edited it, it then becomes like over less time and mm -hmm. kind of moves forward more quickly so um and then of the other problem we had with editing this because then we went to readjust the order of the edit we were making the feature film which didn't help um so we had but then I think actually that is what helped because took some time away from the edit to do the film and then came back to it and then you sort of see oh yeah now I kind of get it a bit more I've got a bit more headspace a bit more perspective and on Predators we ended up doing like quite a few like pickups nothing like we didn't do anything with like the kids or the animals obviously but just simple stuff like you know go and get a, like in the clip for example there's like a clip of um a sign that says like no dumping and just like things like that that we probably just didn't have time to get on the shoot that kind of give you a little bit more um locational context or like you know that sign I mean not to give too much away about the film but a lot of it is about you kind of discarding things that just need care and uh so yeah so we kind of did a lot of pickups we had to do ADR which is um additional dialogue recording I'm, I forgot that right I feel like I might have said something stupid yeah <laughs> um so we uh had a few scenes like where we were running behind schedule one day, we had a scene in a in a house with the two girls and the parents of all the three kids. But we just had no time to to shoot it. So it was kind of this is one of those creative things where you go, oh well, we'll just get that shot of the kid and that shot of the kid, which are the most important things, and then at least the the story will kind of make sense. But then when we edited it, there were things like, oh, you know, we don't we've not 
you get people to watch it and someone goes, oh, I didn't really understand this. And then you realize you've got a problem. So we went and just got like a few extra dialogue lines that kind of filled in the flaws of what people were missing from the story. Uh, so yeah, that's like, you know, you never, there's, there, there is obviously the phrase like fix it in post. And that's just like, it's kind of what you just got to be open to like, how can we now solve this problem without like having a huge budget to go and like reshoot scenes or whatever. So it, yeah. I think we had to kind of get creative with that one, but I really love that film. So I don't, I mean, not everyone will love it, but I love it. So I think we, we got there in the end. Absolutely. It's a fantastic short film. Um, I think one of the things that's come up over and over again is talking about the, the idea of problem solving and how integral that is to the role of the producer all the way through from yeah. pre-production to production to post and kind of talking about um, some of those core skills and things to look out for and things to develop as you go through. Um, we've got just a little bit of time left to go into questions. We've got some really amazing questions through um, from our participants today. So I think we'll make a start on those if that's all right. Um, so, uh, how do you go about seeking funding for your film? Main funders, who are the main funders for short films? Um, I mean, yeah, no, it's yeah, it's not it's not easy. I think the you know the main funder is obviously BFI Net Network, who who are you know doing a lot for supporting uh, filmmakers making shorts. Um, you you have obviously got things like BBC and Film Four who who do fund shorts, but that's kind of more at the going to feature level. And then I think I'm not like, cause I'm not really, I'm, I've just taken on some shorts, but I'm sort of in the early stages, but I'm not really, I haven't made a short for a couple of years now. So there might be things that I'm not familiar with. And there are some things that I knew of that now don't exist. But my point is, is there's a little bit of thinking outside the box. Like if you can't get BFI funding for your short film, like how are you going to do it? Like there's crowdfunding which is like the, you know, I think everybody just kind of shudders when they hear crowdfunding. Some people are really good at it. Some people are not. They're like, it takes a lot of effort. It is kind of a full-time job. Well, it's not a full-time job, but you do, you get out of a crowdfunder what you put into it. The more effort you put into getting it out there, the more money you sort of likely to raise. And that comes back to that passion thing of like, how are you selling your film and who are you appealing to and understanding who you appeal to? And I think... You kind of you can do a crowdfunder maybe once or twice. I think if you if you've done it twice, maybe you've kind of asked everybody for help. That you can ask for help, but you can like think bigger. You can think like, how could I get like a local business on board? Or um, like we did on Bury the Dogs. Like we had a she was um, Beth's from Stoke, and we we got some people from Stoke who ran businesses to kind of put in a chunk of money. So rather than like the ten pounds you might get from your parents, it's like a bit more than that. So. So you can, and it's just, I think it's like, that's doing things within your means is like, if I can only get this amount of money, how can I do it? That is still like telling a story, which you can tell a story on, you know, nothing really. But I understand that thing of like, you, you feeling like you want to grow and like do things that are, that are a step up. So therefore you need a bit more money to do it. And I, I get that. And it is just, yeah, you just kind of have to look at different ways. There are some if you if you kind of in the UK and you're British, it's maybe like you you're looking at the public funding mainly. But if you kind of are working with someone that's maybe got a different background, there might be opportunities in other countries. There's co-production like that is maybe a bit complex if you're just starting out, but you can like look internationally for companies or something that might be interested in someone if they've made something really good before and kind of get people excited that way. Um yeah it's like just keep your eye a bit out there of like you know could you get a um yeah some kind of like brand or company like involved or but that's you know that's tough especially at shots because they're not going to make their money back or anything so you have to kind of like appeal to their better nature a little bit sorry I don't want to go off on a tangent about no, no, no. no it's all right thank you very much um so yeah some some of the another opportunity for people that are starting out um, and just looking for a little bit of support um, through the BFI Film Academy Plus programmes across the UK. Some of the hubs have micro short film funds for grants up to a thousand pounds, just to give you a bit of resources to start off as well. So at Film Hub North, we've closed ours, but we'll be opening again um, next year. So it's worth having a little look at those that are popping up across the UK. 
uh, as well. Thanks for that. That was a great question. Um, so, are there any short film festivals um, that you'd recommend for people starting out specifically? Um, so for people starting out, they're wanting to network, they're wanting to get their films in front of kind of the right people, which festivals would you recommend? Uh, it depends how far afield you want to go, but um, like obviously in, in like local to Yorkshire, you've got Aesthetica, which is focused mainly around shorts. I think they do other stuff now, but they do an industry programme and it's for me, it was always a really great place to meet people. Um, people say really great things about Bolton. Uh, and then, yeah, just I think any, basically any film festival that has an industry programme, that's basically them creating an environment to invite people from the industry. So naturally you're going to, you're going to meet people. I think, you know, I've, ne I've actually never been to Glasgow, but people say great things about Glasgow and, like obviously Edinburgh is really great um but I totally understand like if you're just starting out it's maybe like a bit you know it's the fringe but I don't know if you really like the fringe why not um so yeah I think and then London London Film Festival obviously is, is another really good one they have some really good events and yeah there's I think that's that's the key is like in in the UK that's what I would say like the really good ones but um yeah just look at whether they have an industry program or not um, because if they do, they're probably going to have like some sort of networking event or like panels or talks or something. Um, I'd also recommend the BFI Future Film Festival um, for submissions and networking for young people uh, wanting to get into the film industry as well. Uh, but yeah, thanks for that. That was great. Um, it's given us an idea of some of the festivals to go to. Uh, so the next question um, so what was the most challenging area to deal with as an emerging film producer? Uh, challenging area, probably just the how to make money, like how to sustain yourself. You're probably not going to, you know, really earn any money from making a short film. Like it's it's kind of you're doing it because you want to get somewhere and all of that sort of thing. So it's like, yeah, you kind of have to be, a bit creative how you do that I think it is really hard if you kind of um you know need to really and live in my circumstances are not like super tough because I live in Bradford which is really cheap to live here I don't have kids for example so I get like people in different circumstances have like different financial needs and all that sort of thing so I think that is just that's the tough one is like how do you earn enough money to then be able to maybe like take a bit of time off to make a short film um, and get to the point where maybe you can get some work that is a bit more industry focused. Like I have a lot of, um, I get a lot of work that is flexible, like I work self-employed. And so I kind of find it a little bit easier to do it that way, but I know not everybody can do that. So I understand like that to be the biggest, biggest challenge for every producer that I know. Brilliant, thank you. And um, for some more information on that, you can refer to the last uh, lab we did with Alfie Barker, where he's talking about balancing kind of commercial roles and narrative um, and where that balance kind of sits in the middle. Um, so you can find that on uh, the BFI Film Academy YouTube channel. Let's have a look. Uh, but thanks for that. So we'll have a look at the next question. Um, okay, so this is a good one. So when you get pitched an idea as a producer, at what stage in development is it usually at? Um, and at what point is it developed enough for you to take it on? Um, I mean, I like to come on to projects earlier rather than later, because I think like the more work that's been done on it without you, you kind of feel like, oh, it's in a place where you can um, sort of get your own sort of collaborative stamp on when you're working with someone. Not, I don't mean like as in my writing style, I don't write, but you know, you kind of want to be able to shape it in a way that kind of, if you can see something in a project that you like, but it's not quite perfect, you're only really going to take that on if you feel like the scope to develop it. If it's really developed, you kind of get to the point where you have to say, well, maybe this isn't for me because you you think this is ready. So another producer is going to love this, but it's not quite for me. So, but I would expect if someone's sending me a script or a treatment or something, that it, they would have at least done a draft or two on it to feel like, oh, I'm kind of happy with this and like maybe interrogated it a little bit or 
shown it to a friend and like kind of asked them a few questions about it. I think if I'm seeing something that's really underdeveloped, then you're probably not going to get across what you want to get across with that. But I also have read things like, but, you know, a friend of mine who's really talented has just made his first shot and he kind of sent me this thing and it was, you know, like it was really early days and kind of worked on that a bit together. And But it is like, you know, the more underdeveloped it is, the harder work it is. But there's a there's a balance. There's a balance, I think. Um, and I, I've taken on projects that are kind of ready if I'm not arch, this is amazing. So um, it just depends. It just depends on like whether I love it or not. Yeah. Thank you. I've heard uh, in the past a lot of producers kind of grumbling when somebody approaches them, treating them like a cash machine. They just think they hold the money and that's literally it. So I, I think we're really kind of digging into that kind of perspective of, of a producer and how a filmmaker can approach a producer with an idea uh, to work with. Well, I will say on that, I will say like, yeah, if you're if you're gonna, if I don't know you and you're approaching me with a project, it's like, why me? And it can't just be like, oh, I need someone to like do the legwork or like find the money it's like no why why am I the right person for this like um there must be I mean obviously when I was starting out it's different it's like I was probably doing all the chasing um so it's yeah I think you just have to kind of approach someone like a human it's not yeah you're not just like approaching them willy-nilly and if if I can tell that you copy and pasted the email and just change the name <laughs> I'm not in so yeah Okay, that's a, that's a really valuable piece of information for filmmakers as well as producers there, I think. Um, so we're running out of time. I think we've only got time for maybe two more questions. So um, this kind of leads nicely onto what we were talking about earlier, but how how much can the producer involve their opinion in the story um, when it comes to the development process? Um, I, I, yeah, opinions is a tricky word because I would say ultimately, like, you need to be on board with what that writer is trying to say and so when I said when if I'm giving notes on a script it's very much with that in mind like obviously I've got my own taste and my own thoughts but it's like I'm not I'm not trying to drive it in a direction that doesn't work for what that person wants to tell that story that they want to tell it's like and also I you know with the the people that I have a good working relationship with like Jack and Alfie except and Beth etc it's like if I'm saying, oh, actually, I'm not sure about this. I don't think that this works. Challenge me on it. You know, it's like that. that's how the relationship works. It's like if they're like, no, actually, it's like this because it, I've got the scene in there because it's like if you if that that's the dynamic. So it's not really me saying, like, oh, I don't like this. Get rid of it. It's like there's something that I'm not quite getting here or there's something that I don't quite understand or um, or follow or, you know, this, I'm not sure why this character's done this and then you kind of ask those right questions that lead you both down down a route to kind of solve what the problem is. Because if you're asking a question, there's maybe a problem. So how do you answer that question without like just, you know, in a in a interesting way, in in a script? Um, yeah, no, no, that that sounds absolutely brilliant. Um, so one last question. This is quite a big question. <laughs> so uh, we'll we'll see how we get on with it. But what are the key differences between producing a short film and a feature film? I mean, obviously, there's a lot of like practical differences, but I think it's like the 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 elements that you're maybe going to focus on if you're making a feature film are a bit different. You need a lot more people to like make it happen. The risk is greater. The the kind of the money is a lot more, and you kind of you're talking about making a commercial thing rather than. I mean, you can be making an art house film, but it's still a commercial thing. You still want to sell it. You still want people to see it and go see it, so that someone helps you make the next one. So it's like it's more like you have to get your head in the business side a lot more and then the kind of the scope of the people that you need to meet is so much bigger because you need more people to care about the film and you kind of you're looking at the world instead of just like a festival or like um you know the audience the, the scope of audience gets bigger so therefore the business gets bigger and the risk is bigger and yeah I think I don't know. Every time I would think about make, making a feature film in the earlier days, it would stress me out. And I think it's just not possible. You know, I'm just going to go work in a company and like do it that way. Um, but then you just, I don't know, you just learn as you go along and you just have to sort of understand how these different elements work. So it kind of on a creative level, it, it doesn't feel that different. It just feels like a bigger beast to tackle. So 
yeah, there's just more business acumen, like understanding that the the business industry rather than just the what makes a good film. I think with shorts, it's all about like exploring and, uh, you know, you kind of want to just kind of find out what works and 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 kind of get your name out there a little bit. But with a feature, it's kind of, well, no, you kind of, um, there is obviously the festival route and like getting your film into a festival maybe, but there are lots of, there are lots of other ways to go about it. There are lots of different places to put, put a film. So it's like, what sector are you in within that? And um, so I'm going off on like a really overarching tangent instead of being specific, but um, but yeah, like understanding like sales agents who like will take your film and sell it to distributors, for example, who are like, you know, different people in different countries who will then take it to cinemas in that particular place. Um, and all of those people have a specialty. So it's understanding who your audience is, which I think when you're doing a short film, you're not necessarily, unless you're making a horror and you're like, oh, well, I know my audience is horror fans. Like you don't really think too much about who the audience is because you're probably just going to be screening it at film festivals, right? Like unless mm. you make something a bit bit odd or different that maybe fits in a niche somewhere mm. online or or is like very arty and then it has a different audience. But yeah, I think generally it's more about like it's less of the business. It's more about the growing and like the learning and the being creative.